Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 11th, and it is another oddly beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. About 45 degrees right now, we're going to get up into the 50s today. Yesterday we hit 60 degrees. It's February, go figure, but I'm not complaining. Ah, it's been a been a great weekend so far. I've uh, got, got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about home blending tobacco. We're going to talk about church wardens. Uh, so hang on, this is going to be a, a fun ride today. But before I get into that, I did want to uh, ask you guys to think about, if you're thinking about buying a new pipe uh, or a reamer, perhaps, uh, check out our buddy Phil Rivera. So Phil, you, you all know Phil. He's, he's an important part of the pipe community here on YouTube. He's a good friend, a uh, great pipe maker. And, uh, you know, pipe makers have their ups and downs and you know Phil's one of these guys that when he sees somebody that needs something he jumps right in he was the first person to uh, point out the problems that Janos was having uh, with his shop being burglarized that I talked about a few weeks ago uh, so you know Phil's definitely somebody that that helps folks and uh, he's in a situation right now that's a bit tough you know, he's had a lot of property damage due to some storms uh, it's just a, a messy situation and as a pipe maker. He's sort of on a razor's edge in terms of, uh, you know, being able to keep things financially stable. So he's just asking for folks to take a look at his stuff and, and if you're interested, you know, make a purchase. And he's got some really nice stuff available right now. Um, he's got on his Etsy shop, he's got a uh, freehand pipe that's just a really beautiful straight grain pipe. Uh, he put on YouTube a freestyle that's got some African blackwood beautiful grain really really nice looking pipe and these are substantial pipes too then they're they're, they're uh, if, if you guys are into uh, larger sort of freehand style you, you owe it to yourself to take a look and he's also got a couple of his reamers available and I've got one of Phil's reamers and it is one of the it is my favorite pipe maintenance tool uh, flat out say that uh, it's it's designed for maintaining the cake in your pipes not for restoration work where you got an old pipe with a lot of cake in it but just making sure the cake in your pipe stays where it needs to be. And they're, they're beautiful tools. He, he does a beautiful job making them. And he's got a couple of those that can be uh, made to order. So take a look. I will put links below to Phil's Etsy shop. Uh, I'll put a link to the recent pipe that he put on YouTube. That's the uh, Freestyle with the African Blackwood. Really beautiful pipe. And uh, you can check him out on Instagram. I'll put a link to his Instagram as well uh, down below. Uh, great guy if you're looking for any of those things go and give him a little bit of support I, I know he'll appreciate it and also if you directly message him uh, through Instagram or get in touch with him some other way uh, you can avoid the uh, the extra charges he'll he'll sell directly to you I think you'll get things a little bit cheaper and he doesn't have to pay the the fees that uh, Etsy charges so think about that go check him out uh, and uh, Phil, Phil's a guy you should keep on your radar because he is really a talented pipe carver. All right, um, so I got I got into a little bit of home blending recently, and that's what I want to I want to talk about. That I'm going to smoke it in an unusual pipe today, so we'll 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 talk about that as well. Uh, but the reason behind this, the genesis, was that uh, haunted bookshop keeps not being available. And it's frustrating. I know my buddy Everett Young is frustrated by this too, and a lot of other folks that enjoy it. Uh, it's just sold out in bulk all the time now. And recently, I wanted to get some, and yeah, you know, I was running low, so I have a lot of it cellared. But that's for retirement. Uh, I keep a couple of pounds around because I smoke it all the time. And I had gotten down to my last bag of, of haunted bookshop again I got plenty cellared so it's not like I'm in dire straits or anything but I didn't want to open that until I could order more and fortunately it suddenly became available this past Thursday and I, I did order more so I'm able to smoke haunted bookshop once again but uh, to get me through that two or three days where I was worried I went and uh, Decided to try something different. So I thought to myself, well, I know what I like about Haunted Bookshop. You know, I like the Red Virginia. I like the Perique. I like the, the Burley. You know, those are things I know I like. And I've got all these blending tobaccos. So why not 
try to put something together. Now, I've got these tobaccos because, well, reasons. And they're old. They've been sitting in plastic bags forever. They're crispy. You know, they're not something you would think would be very good. So I've got some, uh, this is some Red Virginia Ribbon from Pipes and Cigars. Uh, this bag is ancient. I actually got it from my buddy Jack. You can hear just how crispy this is. All this tobacco is bone dry. So we got some Red Virginia Ribbon. Uh, I can't even read the labels on these things. This, well, you, <laughs> you can see how old this is just by the label. This is granulated perique from Smoking Pipes. Again, very crispy. I like the granulated stuff. If you can get it, it just blends better than the ribbon cut. But perique is perique. And I bought this because I love perique and I like to add it to things. And, you know, so that's why I have that. Uh, one of these, yeah, I think this is the Cube Cut Burley. Again, had it forever. And I also got some, uh, this also came from Jack. This is some Long Cut Virginia. And, again, ancient crispy tobaccos. So I thought to myself, well, you know, why not mix some of these things together and, and see what I get? So I started off with one part Red Virginia, uh, about half as much Cube Cut Burley, and then maybe a quarter as much Perique, uh, probably a little bit less than that. I'm not doing exact measurements, you know, this is just for fun. Added some water, uh, actually just drops of water. If you, if you want to get fancy, you can get a spray sprayer or something, if the tobacco is dry and if you need it. Mixed it all up, put it in a container overnight, smoked it the next day and thought, you know what, this is nothing like Haunted Bookshop, but it's good. It's got all the things in it that I enjoy. Why not? Smoked all of that and then made a, another batch in which I included that long cut Virginia. Just because I know there's other Virginias in Haunted Bookshop, I thought, let's see what that does. To be honest, I don't like it as much. I'd probably leave out the long cut next time. But I've got an old tobacco tin here that I put it in. And I'll show you what this looks like. Now remember, that, that was crispy dry tobacco. I added a bit of water. And this is a perfectly smokable blend, just the right amount of moisture. I got lucky. You know, sometimes I do this and I get too much moisture and I gotta let it dry out a bit. But uh, this one turned out just just perfect. And it's surprisingly good. Again, it's I, I think the Long Cut Virginia added a little bit too much tartness to it, but this is fun. You know, if you like the components, you're not gonna wind up with something unsmokable. Unless you do something silly, like try to make a 90% lot of Kia blend or something. So, you can have fun with this, it's relatively inexpensive, and it helps you better appreciate the components. So you understand, you know, if I bump up the Cube Cut Burley a little bit, I get this effect. And it's, it's just a really good way to get to know the tobaccos. So I highly recommend, if you know what you like, buy a couple of, you know, two ounce pouches of uh, the blending tobaccos and play with them. We're going to be smoking this today in... This guy, this is a Big Ben Church Warden, and I bet you've never seen me smoke this because I very, very rarely bring this pipe out. The reason I've got it out is I've been going through this process of making sure that I smoke every pipe in my rotation. Uh, I realize there's some that I'm neglecting, some that I might not want to keep, so I'm giving them all a fair chance. I'm going to do this a couple of times and then decide whether I want to reconfigure the rotation and so on. So. We're getting down to the dregs because this is one that I would very, very rarely smoke. Let's load this up. I'll tell you a bit about the blend and then I'll tell you, talk a bit about church wardens because church wardens are fascinating pipes, both in their history and in how they smoke. And I'll give you a spoiler alert. There's a reason I only have one. They're not very clenchable. I feel like I need binoculars to see if I'm lighting it properly. Okay, I'll stop. I'm sorry.
got the Larry Blackett Sherlock tamper here for a reason and that's why I've got this pipe actually there we go so yeah this blend is interesting I mean the red Virginias are are great um the burley adds that sort of meat and potatoes basement to the blend and then you get the pre the long cut virginia which is a slightly brighter where the heck is, it? is this guy Oh, I don't know. I can't see these, but it's a brighter Virginia. It's adding a little bit of tartness to it that is not my thing. I'm I'm not into that sort of Virginia. I like the more deep, mellow Virginias. Uh, but I this is a perfectly reasonable blend that I would enjoy smoking. If Haunted Bookshop went away tomorrow, I'd be okay. I would be able to buy these components and make something that made me happy. And yes, maybe there's another blend out there that's already made that I could find in bulk and, and would be a perfectly fine replacement. And, you know, I could argue that something like Old Joe Krantz would certainly do it. Although if Haunted Bookshop goes away, Old Joe Krantz is probably going to go away too. Yeah, it's good stuff though. The church wardens, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm having trouble keeping it in, in shot, and I, I do in, well, I shouldn't say I enjoy, but I tend to clench, so. So let's get through the, well, the history. So supposedly the reason these are called church wardens, and I find this to be absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> This has got to be myth. <laughs> but the wardens of the church, the, the caretakers, would sit in the church during the mass and they'd want to smoke their pipe. But apparently they weren't allowed to because of the accumulation of smoke so that they, so they would have these long stem pipes so they could hang them out the window and smoke. Now that's ridiculous for a number of reasons. I mean, it just seems like a silly story, but as we all know, the majority of smoke is not coming from the bowl, right? It's coming from your mouth. So that was not going to do very much. So that is almost certainly myth. Uh, these are probably more based on the old uh, clay pipes, which had very long stems. And the reason they had very long stems is that they were uh, for sanitary reasons. They they were tavern pipes. You would go into a tavern and you would actually get a pipe you know, with your with your drink. And nobody wanted to smoke the pipe that the last guy smoked, so you'd snap off the end of it and you'd have a nice fresh uh, bit. And eventually they got too short and you throw them away. And the taverns would collect up these ends and apparently throw them in the river because if you go to places like the, the Thames River in England, it, it's apparently very easy to find these old uh, clay pipes in the river. So, fascinating stuff. But, history aside, these pipes have seen a resurgence in popularity. Uh, mostly because of the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, you know, I, I don't recall Tolkien, it's, I haven't read Tolkien since I was in grade school, but I don't recall him describing the pipes as church wardens. Uh, I could be wrong about that. But that's what the, where, that's how the movie envisioned them. Certainly Gandalf's pipe was a big church warden and people just, everybody wanted to have them. and. That's not why I had this pipe. 
The reason I have this pipe is I was putting together a presentation on the pipes of Sherlock Holmes, which is why Stamper came out today to remind me of this. And now it's interesting because everybody thinks of Holmes as smoking the big calabash. Uh, he never in in the stories, uh, the Arthur Conan Doyle stories, he never smoked a calabash. He never smoked a church warden. He had, if I recall, three pipes. Well, three pipes were described. One was just referred to as a pipe. So that may have been, he may have only had two. Uh, the other was a cherry wood. And the last one was described as a old black clay, uh, which I take to mean it was a, a clay pipe that had blackened from use from the fact that Holmes Holmes wasn't a uh, refined pipe smoker. He used the pipe as a means of nicotine delivery, period. Uh, so he didn't care about the pipe, and it probably was blackened because he would have soot on his hands, because he would light it from the fireplace and everything else. Or it might have been all the tar that had accumulated from his black shag tobacco, whatever. It just was not a pretty sight from uh, what I imagine. But he never smoked a church warden. But Jeremy Brett did in the in the Granada uh, series of Sherlock Holmes, which is the best uh, adaptation of the Arthur Conan Doyle stories that's ever been made. And he used it to great effect because he would use it as a prop. You know, he would he would use it to point and things like that and indicate and gesture. So he really, and that's the reason why the word Calabash became associated with Holmes, because the first actor to portray Holmes on the stage in a play, whose name I can never remember, he chose the word Calabash because he wanted it to be big enough to be seen from the audience. So it's not about being faithful to the stories, it's about being able to project something to the audience in, in both cases. I loved Brett, I loved what he did, and I was putting together this presentation on the pipes, including the Gord Calabash and the history behind that, the Petersons that were famously smoked by uh, Basil Rathbone, and uh, Jeremy Brett's church warden. And uh, yeah, so that's why I have it. I've probably smoked this about 10 times at the most. So why don't I like them? Well, they're goofy. They're big. Not goofy, but they're, they're big. They're, un, they're cumbersome. Uh, I'm not going to drive with this pipe in my mouth. I'm not going to walk around with this pipe in my mouth. And that's what I do most of my smoking, you know, when I'm doing stuff. I'm not the kind of guy that sits in a chair and enjoys a book. And I do it sometimes, yeah, but most of the time I'm just walking around. So it's not a good fit for me and my pipe smoking style. The other thing that I find with this pipe, and it's interesting to me, is I have to be very careful not to overheat it. And not to uh, burn my tongue. So most people will argue that a church warden provides a cooler, drier smoke, and that's why they like them. The physics of that do not make sense. So the idea is that you've got this longer, longer distance for the smoke to travel, and therefore it's going to have time to cool down. And the drier part, I'm not quite sure why people think it would be drier. Um, it shouldn't be. If anything, this should accumulate more moisture, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, now, if you have a bamboo church warden or a wooden church warden, which, you know, is a thing. You know, people have the wooden stems on, on some of these uh, Lord of the Rings inspired pipes. They may smoke drier because the wood or the, uh, the bamboo can absorb moisture. But this piece of uh, ebonite is not absorbing any moisture.
but the cooler is is really interesting because the smoke that you're drawing out of this according to physics should be hotter so if you know anything about firearms a bullet leaving a pistol a handgun is going to be traveling at a much lower velocity than a bullet leaving a rifle the reason for that is the time that it has to to pass through that confined space it accelerates during that travel the bullet can't accelerate once it leaves the gun it can only accelerate in the gun so the longer the barrel the more acceleration you get the same with this you know if you apply an equal amount of pressure to a pipe with a long stem or a pipe with a short stem the smoke leaving the short stem is traveling slower than the smoke leaving the long stem it's just physics now why is that important well to get that smoke to move faster you have to be drawing air in faster and if you're drawing air in faster you're bringing more oxygen into the tobacco and just like if you blow on a fire in, in a campfire in a fire in a fireplace you increase the burning rate you increase the heat same things happening here so equal amount of pressure this thing is going to burn hotter and you're going to get tongue bite so you have to slow down your cadence you have to sip it more and maybe that's a good thing maybe that's what people like about them but you can get the same cool smoke from a short stem pipe if you adjust your cadence that, that's the point honestly how you smoke a pipe is much more important than how the pipe is made within reason you know, if you got a an eight, eighth inch round bore into the it, that's not going to smoke well. But if it's if it's somewhat reasonably funneled and you know there's no big steps in the in the airway, I've had very few pipes that I couldn't smoke uh, that I couldn't get to perform for me. I've had some that I didn't like. Um, Maybe I had to go too far in how I, I would change my cadence and, and, and all that. Uh, but I've never had, with one exception, I've never had a pipe that I couldn't get to smoke well. That one exception was a Brigham filter pipe that I just could not figure out. Um, I don't know what was, I didn't like the filters, they didn't fit properly. And uh, smoking that thing without the filter was a nightmare. Anyway, that's um, that's my rant and ramble about church wardens. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy them. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy them. I'm just saying that for me, there's reasons I don't like them, and there's reasons I don't smoke this very often. But it is a great pipe for pointing at things, and Jeremy Brett used it masterfully if you're even a minor fan of Sherlock Holmes and you've not seen the Granada series with Jeremy Brett find it there's a lot of episodes on YouTube it is it is wonderful and he was an incredible actor in the way that he assumed the role of Holmes it, it's it's something to watch But I'm really enjoying this uh, homemade bookshop. Homebrew bookshop, is that what I called it in the title card? Jeremy Brett's in the title card with his church warden, by the way. Well, folks, in terms of shop updates, I've got the first coat of paint on the wall. Woo hoo! Uh, didn't go all the way to the end because I still got stuff in that corner, but. This wall behind me is like 90% painted now, and I can now move the equipment back again. Well, I want to put another coat on, but 
the second coat is easy with this stuff. The first coat is really hard because you're getting that cinder block uh, filled in, and it, it takes a really long time. It takes a lot of paint. This is a dry lock paint. Second coat goes on pretty easy. So I'm going to do a second coat, and uh, then I can move the equipment back and start to <laughs> get things working again. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to put up a new shelf, a little bit more storage space. I got a neat little uh, charging station that my wife bought me for uh, Christmas that is to put all of my uh, Ryobi battery powered drills and, and nail gun and stuff and it also can hold the charger and the batteries and everything so I'm really happy about that that'll help keep things organized and it'll free up some shelf space that currently those things are sitting on that could be used for other stuff we're getting there guys we're getting there before I die this shop will be functional <laughs> If I ever finish it, that'll probably be my last day, which is fine. It's part of the fun. So, today I'm not going to do very much. Uh, did some yard work yesterday, actually. It was beautiful. So, went out and cleared up some branches and stuff like that. Uh, today I'm just going to take it easy. It's Sunday. I'll uh, smoke this church warden. Drink some coffee and watch the day go by. Probably putter down here a little bit on some stuff that I'm playing with. Uh, we shall see. Uh, yeah, and that's that. So I hope you all have a fantastic Sunday and are looking forward to a great week ahead. Valentine's Day on Wednesday. Ash Wednesday on Wednesday. Oh, there's a football game tonight. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, Chiefs are going to win. I'm completely not interested. So if you are interested, enjoy. Have a great week, my friends. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.